This is the rank one player of the North American solo queue ladder for season 2022. His name is Timul Rumble. He's a Rumble jungle main. The thing is, is that he's not actually rank one. This person is a known win trader and has had help from some of the most prominent win traders in North America to get rank one. Today, we will be discussing the world of win trading and how it's become so rampant that you can do it all the way up to the top of the solo queue ladder, the massive effect that win trading is having on streamers, and how a 16-year-old boy is making $16,000 in just a single month. This is League of Documentary. Before we begin today's documentary, I just want to give a really quick shout out to my sponsor, Porofessor. This documentary you're about to watch took a very, very long time to finish. It took... I started this probably... Somewhere around summer is when win trading started to take off and people started to talk about it. And it took a very, very long time to get all the interviews done and compile all of this information and make sure that it was at least reasonably accurate. Um, so this this took a very, very long time to do. And it's thanks to my sponsor, like Porofessor, that we're able to do such in-depth and knowledgeable documentaries. Poor Professor allows you to look up all your teammates before you actually play the game. Instead of firing up OB.GG and manually looking up every single person, Poor Professor gives you insight on each and every single player before the game actually starts. Poor Professor also gives you an incredible amount of convenience when looking at your stats. Not only does it easily pull up all of your personal stats for you to be able to view and understand, it gives you champion stats, win rates, popularities, and easy to access understandable patch notes on every single patch you may have missed. Porofessor is one of the most compact convenience creators for any league player, and you can download it with my link in the description right now. My name is Zhu Yang, or WX. I'm one of the top win traders in NA. I manage top business, win trading business in NA, and I've been win trading for about five years on Asia servers, like China and Korea, and in NA. I also manage other Chandra players. There's other like people in this business that I manage. What happens is they give me like um their their rank, their MMR, and like how much games they want to win trade. And we like bargain the price sometimes. It could be like 45 to 65 for D1 to Masters. Once they pay, what happens is we both queue at the same time. We get into a call. If they're not in my lobby, I dodge. I swap accounts. I do whatever I need to get into their lobby. Honestly, I would say 30, 30 to 40% of Masters don't deserve it. They're like D4 players. And like these people, they, they'll const constantly buy D1 to Masters over again. Because they, they drop, they just keep buying it again. And yeah, that's why D1 to Masters is the most profitable. Because some of these players, they just don't deserve it. What was your personal highest rank? Rank six, like 1,400 LP. Do you think that you can win trade yourself up to rank one? I for sure can win trade myself to rank one. Go, 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 go open NA leaderboard right now. Oh, look, look who's rank one. So, so is this you? Is this one of your accounts? Well, one of my, one of my uh, like workers, or like people, one of the people I manage, yeah. So this guy, without any sort of skill or knowledge of the game, you basically win traded himself up to to challenger no 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 like um he can he can do it himself but someone traded someone trading was involved yes so he is a challenger level player it's just that he he can also hit rank one but you guys helped him out too but you know like we gave some support support okay so what what separates mine from that one game is sometimes like for, we don't make it as blatant but like we if we're on your team and we're win trading you don't win but like you you can't like um 100 tell that like we're win trading you know what we're looking for is natural ways to lose. Like if you're playing ADC, you go try bush, and you. I tell the other guy like um to tell his team to go there, and then we die, and yeah, we get we get invaded on purpose. I tell them to invade, like the, my customer tell them to invade, and it's just like a natural way to lose. You know, it's not just me running this. I manage like a few other people. There's no way a human being can do this like all by themselves. We have high elo players reach out for us, and like and they let us like use their accounts for win trades for uh a portion of the profits. Like, you really never know who's a win trader on your team. They, they get a 50-50 split from account rentals. How much do you generally make in a single month? A single month? I mean, I'm a student, right? So I have to take breaks. But if I just win traded the entire day and, like, didn't go to school, I would make, like, 700 individually, but my whole group would make, like, 3,000 like 3, or more. So that's 700 individually a day, right? How much would you make in, a, in an entire month? So 700 times 30, is, is that accurate to say? Or how many days of the uh, month do you work? Okay, for me personally, like realistically, I'd be like 16, 17K. I have like 15 people, right? But not all of them are active. But I'll say there's at least nine active per day. So how did you qualify to become an immigrant? Was it your parents had money or the, the school program? What? Oh, it, it was like a school program at my school in China, in uh, Shandong province. 
。哦、oh, ，你是从山东来的？我是从南京来的。啊？呃、uh... ，Hello？ 你好 ，Hello， 怎么搞的 ？I, I'll just be straight for you. I'm not Chinese. I just say that so I get more orders. Wait, so what are you? I'm Vietnamese and white. <laughs> yeah. <I'm... laughs> But like, you can't believe me for doing that, right? Because you know, so you know, you know the stereotype. Yeah. So, so you're a Viet banana posing as a chick to get more orders. That yeah, like. At the, at the start, yeah, because、uh, you, you know, like you already know the stereotype in how you look, like reach out with like Chinese people when shooting. Oh my god! Wait, so did you even hit Challenger? Yeah, I actually hit Challenger at thirteen. Okay, on any, well, that's still pretty impressive. I've been like, going by WX or Yang online for like years now. So, so you've never been to China? You've never been anywhere near China? I, I've never been in A. <laughs> Oh my god, that's great! That's fantastic!、Oh. Like in in the Lee community, the Winchester community, I've been saying I was Chinese for like a long, a really long time. So, so you're just some NA shithead pretending to be Chinese to make more money. Yeah. WX manages hundreds of accounts on the Masters ladder. He estimates he has over a thousand accounts in Masters Plus. Although Riot has announced that they would begin manually monitoring high elo games, WX isn't concerned about their efforts. In fact, he thinks that this new season will be even more profitable than the previous ones. Here's why: Riot's latest change to try and reduce toxicity is by removing summoner names while in champ select. This is to prevent players from searching up their teammates while they're in champ select. Many people tend to make assumptions based on win rates, champions, and last few games played, and just decide that the game was thrown before the game even begins. Although this might sound like a nice change in theory against toxic players, this is an extremely helpful tool for win traders. One of the biggest problems that win traders have is the amount of time that their teammates dodge. Hilo is a very small community, and if you have WX in your name. Then it's a pretty high chance that you're win trading. People will often instantly and immediately dodge a game whenever they see the name WX in their lobby. Smurf queue was introduced in order to prevent players from smurfing too much. It's essentially a queue where you're only put into a lobby with other Smurfs, and the games are extremely challenging and toxic. Unfortunately, Smurf queue doesn't actually affect your MMR. There are lots of players out there that are capable of getting all the way up to Masters MMR with just a single week of playing. You don't need to be in Masters to actually play with Master tier players. You can be Diamond Four, but have Master Tier MMR. As long as you're able to queue up with the customers and get into one of their actual games, you can win trade them. That's all that really matters. The cost of a Master Tier account is roughly worth a hundred dollars. If you win trade all of your relevant Elo off of it, then you can make roughly six hundred dollars. What do the letters WX actually mean, and why is it always followed by a number? WX is an abbreviation that stands for Wei Xing, known in English as WeChat. The number in their name stands for the WeChat ID you can add them on. WeChat is the most standardized chatting app that the Chinese people use. It has a massive monopoly on the Chinese communication market, and it also happens to be owned by Tencent, the same company that owns Riot Games. When somebody sees they have the characters WX in their name, it implies that they're a win trader looking to sell their services. It also coincidentally helps WX sell the fiction that he's actually Chinese. The pe the people like、uh, that get win trade from us like. They lose because of us. They add, they add us, and like, you buy their LP back. You know what I mean? Benefits us when it hurts us, because we don't mind like a few dodges, a few extra time for more like buyers. So if you have the name WX in your name, basically after somebody loses to you or gets lost because of you, they'll add you to try and get their LP back by doing the exact same service and repeating the cycle. Like the high level players of WX in their name, yeah. How many people just put WX in their name? Just for shits and giggles, and they—they're not win traders at all, and they just—they're just doing it to say, "Oh yeah, I'm—I'm I'm a Chinese win trader. Fear me." Um, I'll take them out, like, because some people just like they think it's funny to do that. Win trading is a seasonal business. The biggest spike in business is obviously the season's end. WX estimates that in the last thirty days, his group of ten people has made roughly about forty thousand U.S. dollars. Right now, we're in the preseason. This is the second most important season for WX. Preseason is their restock time. Once they've lost all these games and lost value on their accounts, they have to get back in control of solo queue. 
All of these accounts that used to be Master Tier and Challenger have significantly dropped off. So they can just simply choose to play games in preseason instead. If you win your preseason games, they still affect your hidden score, your MMR or matchmaking rating. If you increase your MMR, it can be fixed easily for next season. So if you want to get a ranked account back into Master Tier, it's a lot easier next year. Win traders are also contesting with less elo boosters because the season has ended and nobody is really trying to rank up anymore. Here's why the idea of solo queue betting doesn't exist. Do people bet on Tyler1, Tarzane, and Bob Quinn's games? Yes. Are they real bets? Not really. In order to understand this, let's take a look at regular betting odds. There are two basic outcomes when it comes to a bet, win or lose. Let's say that 10 people each bet $100 for Tyler1 to win his game and then one person bets $100 for him to lose. If this was straight betting odds, then the odds would be 10 to one. But when it comes to solo queue betting, the odds don't really matter that much. Why? Because these people can directly affect the outcome of the game. Any betting service always makes more money when people lose money. Instead of giving 10 to one odds, the service will usually give you five to one odds. Then the win traders will put a bunch of accounts onto Tyler's team and ensure that the outcome always favors whatever the outcome is going to be more profitable for them. Because it's not just win traders on Tyler 1's team, it's win traders on the opposing team as well. So imagine right before the Super Bowl started and the Patriots took the field, you as a bookkeeper had the power to infect Tom Brady with cancer. It would be pretty difficult for you to ever lose a bet ever again. That's essentially what they're doing here. The bettors know this. If you're someone who's willing to bet on solo queue, there's no chance you wouldn't be at least aware of the win traders. This is an analysis of Tyler 1's games and the players he's been win traded on. If you look at the stats, Tyler 1 has a ridiculous 100% win rate against the vast majorities of the exact same players that actually try to make him lose these games. People are not betting in order to try and make money. This isn't solo queue betting. Fans are essentially crowdfunding rage compilations of these streamers. But the, the betting, if you think about like uh, a lot of people wouldn't do it because like why, why do you bet when this can go win traded anyways? Like the best just can be controlled. The the betting part, he like exaggerates it a lot. It's just like people, his viewers just want, want to piss him off. Uh, I don't want to exaggerate that part like a lot. Like no, what's, what's crazy to me is like they're like actual like huge fans of the streamer, and they're still paying for him to lose, just for just for like fun, I guess. So like think think about it as like a show, you know? I I guess they like it when they they're on stream and then the streamer loses and it's like they're like hey, it's because of me that they lost. I talk to like people who do Tyre One win trades. It is from it. Like so, some of them, some of them, they they rely on it to like just like survive. If he doesn't stream, they just have to eat. They'll, they'll have to like like you know just not eat or like eat a like, couple noodles or something. It, it's it's literally what happens. Some people just rely on it to make money. I, I'll say the majority of people who do Tyre One win trades are like around college age. Tyler One's rage has literally put kids through college. Without his anger, these kids would have to go out there and get real jobs. Here are the main reasons that League fans want to see their favorite streamers rage. They've recently played a game that was rage inducing, so in order to feel better about themselves, they will go pay a win trader to make their favorite streamer lose a game so that they can feel better about themselves. Reason number two, they find rage soothing after a stressful day's work. While some people find classical music, warm baths, and nice food relaxing, there are others who enjoy watching chaos, destruction, fights, or rage compilations to relieve their own stress. And they will go out of their way to pay win traders hundreds of dollars to find this relief. Making their favorite streamer lose on purpose is sort of like contributing to the stream. They come back to this content every single day, and finally they're a part of it. They're an active role in shaping what it is. They're not just watching Tyler1, they're being a part of his day. This is one of the top posts from tyler One's subreddit, and it perfectly embodies what his fans want from him. I am a Tyler1 hate watcher. Every day I wait for his offline chat for hours waiting for him to go live. I have never missed typing negative one when he misses CS. I have never missed typing Keck W when he dies. When he starts stream, I always point out how bald and short he is. I have 15 alt accounts on separate tabs ready at all times. This man is my anathema. This man is my purpose. This man is my life. 
Those are the kinds of people that are paying for these win trades. Not geniuses looking to make thousands of dollars off of solo queue. Just regular degens with way too much time on their hands and money management problems. Twitch streamers are essentially today's reality TV stars. People follow them and obsess over the latest gossip or drama. Who's dating who? Who looks sexy in what outfit? Who's got the most viewers right now on Twitch? Twitch streamers are essentially the Gen Z version of keeping up with the Kardashians. Do you think that if the Kardashian fans could pay to hire a male prostitute to have one of the Kardashians cheat on their spouse, wouldn't you want to see that for just the sheer drama? Instead of keeping up with the Kardashians, you could have a service called pissing off the Kardashians. That would be a massive business and is essentially what's being done here today. Whether they're Twitch fans or reality TV fans, people all want the same thing. They want to see rich, famous people suffer. Whenever a streamer talks about win trading, it doesn't actually hinder the business. Season 13, there's actually like really no risk for me at all. It's actually just helping promote my business. I honestly think I'll make the most money I'll, I'll, I'll ever made in my life in season 13. The, the way like the new teams right made where you can't make your, you can't see your teammates in chip select. I really think that like, you know, I'll make so much money in that time. Like win trading would just be a lot easier. All I, all I get from like making these videos is like publicity for my business. You, you, you can't avoid win trading no matter what happens. Because what I told you about before about the lended accounts, you, you like, sometimes you know if it's a win trader, but like, if you dodge every win trader, you literally just won't be able to play the game because dodge timer. Especially somebody like, like Tyler1 where he's popular. I don't, I don't think Tyler1 will ever avoid win trading. But so Tyler1 and win trading, like, I, I, I just had more orders of people just like, like, his viewers just wanted to throw this game more. That's like what, what happened to me. When the league community out there, people just want to see you, like, they don't want to see you succeed in the league community. So people will take, like, drastic measures. What I said to Riot, they're actually doing a terrible job at managing their game. Like, like I said, they should be monitoring how you a little more. Because, like, uh, sometimes I play these games, right? Like, I watch these games that are just play too much rates. It's just by like randoms and friends. Like, high elo, a lot of high elo is just, like, a friend group. Win trading will happen, like, no, no matter what. And, like, the, because of Riot, they're just, like, letting this, letting this happen. Like even if you get banned for win trading or like or like elo boosting anything like that, it's only like a two week ban and like your honor, your honor, and like you won't get end of the world seasons. Like that won't really stop it, no. Because their punishment for for like win trading is like nothing. And that's where we're at today. The number one win trader in North America is so confident that Riot won't do anything to him that he's willing to openly discuss his business model because he knows it's just another bump in orders for him. Win trading may exist in other games, but it certainly does not exist to the scale that it does here. Solo queue is the foundation in which a player becomes good at this game. And if Riot decides that this solo queue win trading thing is not worth fixing, then NA solo queue is going to be even more worthless than it already is. When Faker said NA solo queue is harder than Worlds itself, it's because he doesn't have one of these win traders constantly in his game.